Hey everybody, so Danelle with Danelle Citry here. So week two of the tutorials of my blocks. So last week we did the snowball block. And that is, that was, my whole idea of this whole concept came about because of doing the um, donation quilts um, under the name of Harper Strong for Handmade by Ying Madonna granddaughter Harper that has been having health issues and had to have a heart transplant. So we're donating a bunch of us renegades over at the In Quilt Fact group, membership group. We call ourselves the renegades. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. So we have, we're making a bunch of donation quilts and everything. So everybody is sending me their quilt blocks and that are six and a half inches uh, these snowball blocks and as you see I have a bunch up behind me on my little improv design board and what is six and a half inch squares with two and a half inch these here are three it's supposed to have been two and a half inch um, squares in the corners that are snowballing the corners to create the snowball block so this week here, let me put this out right over here. <coughs> Sorry about that. It's a little tickle in my throat tonight. So tonight, I I am doing the snail trail. I've had a request from a few viewers in the past and everything asking me to do this. And I really never actually got to it. So now I've gotten it scheduled in. And, but this one here, I designed this one here through the, with the colors and all. It's not the colors of the fabrics. I'm sticking with this color scheme of the fabrics, which is the Jack Skellington fabrics with black as the offset color or the accent color. And this one here is going to, not going to be six and a half inches like that one was. This one here is going to be 13 inches by 13 inches. Because I attempted to do it at six and a half inch by six and a half inch. I wasn't crazy about the really small pieces at the center of it. So I wanted to go a little bit bigger. So I have all my fabrics cut up. And I will be telling you the sizes as I go. Plus I'll have the sizes of everything and directions for cutting and all in the uh, listed in the description of the video below. If you would like a printout of the design as well as the cutting instructions through EQ8, then try and send me an email to Donnell's Stitchery, that's D-O-N-N-E-L-L-S-S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R-Y at gmail.com, and I will email this to you. So that way there you have a copy for your own purposes. Now, I'm going to move the mouse away. Put the mouse over here and we're going to get started. So, I'm going to be doing my seams with white thread. So, that way there you can actually see my my seams. And since I have not done this before, I am going to be using my little thing here. I made myself a larger one. So, this is a century... The block here that we're going to be doing and I have all my pieces here all labeled and I have or my diagram all labeled and all my pieces I have time labeled with the letter as well as the coordinating um, size of the square it was before I cut it up and whether I cut it diagonally or crossways into quarters so we are going to start with the letter G because that is our center. And letter D is two of the black as well as two of the main fabric. So two of the jet skeleton fabrics as well as two of the black fabrics. And they are going to go together in a four patch. And these here are two and a quarter inches. So we're going to sew these together. And I'm using a quarter inch seam on this.
So let me move this stuff on my way so that way there I can do my pressing. I've already done up pretty much all of my cutting before. And I'm pressing towards my black fabric for all of my pieces. That way there I can keep all my seams going in the same direction. And now I'm just going to sew these so that way they're, they're essentially like this. I'm going to flip that one around. Oops, or not. Okay, so it's going to have to be like this. A little lopsided, but that's okay. You can iron the seams open. You can iron them to the dark side, to whichever side that you like. There are no rules in this. All right, so next we are going to sew on to all four corners the letter E. So now I just got to go through here and find my letter E. And here we go. And my letter E, according to my plat thing here, is four and a half inches. Need one square at four and a half inches of each fabric, and then you're gonna cut it in crossways. So cut it at from corner to corner. So we are gonna start off with, which gives you actually four of each when you do that, but we only need two of each. And I'm going to use the two jet scaling tins that has that actually has that there. So what you're going to do is you're going to try and pick a side, and the black will go on one side, while the jet skeleton will go on the other. And you want that overhang to be a little bit on each side, roughly about a quarter of an inch on each side, so that way there. You got that little bit of overhang there. So we're going to start off with the black. And what the best thing to do is when you try and turn your... Oh, actually, you know what? Let me start with the Jack Skellington so that way there you can actually see it better. So what you want to do is you want to turn it this way. And you know you got it centered whenever that tip right there... When you got this lined up straight over here. And the tip over here is right on that seam. That's when you know you got that centered. Now I'm gonna sew mine up with a new piece upside down. And that's so that way there I don't have to fight my seam on the bottom. And so I'm just gonna try and I'm just gonna finger press this open. Or finger press that back. So that way that I can come over here and sew this one on. And once again, I'm just going to match this up. Make sure I have this straight on this edge with based upon my block. And that this my point of my triangle is on my seam. That tells me I had this centered. Okay. 
and then I'm pressing and I'm pressing towards the new blocks or the new pieces. And then if you want, you can go ahead and trim off the little dog ears. To remove the excess bulk. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew over to this side. I'm going to sew those on. So let me go ahead and take care of that. And since I'm using a solid fabric, then you can't really actually tell which way is the right way or which side is the pretty side and which side is not. So as far as that goes, it really doesn't matter that much right now. Now I'm just going to finger press that open for now. Now I'll come over here and take care of this one. And essentially the next couple of rounds is going to be the same process. Just different size of, of pieces of fabric for each round. And I'm just trimming off my excess corners on these before I open this up and press it. That way there I can remove all the excess fabric of the dog ears and have a nice straight block relatively. As you can see here, this one's a little off and that's okay because that's going to be caught in my seam allowance of the next round. So now my next round is going to be letter B as in boy and that one it was cut and I actually did cut this at an eighth is a four and one eighth. You could go larger if you want and just trim down but it's four and one eighth and you cut the squares in half. So since I started the last one with the Jet scaling chin. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. And what you want to do is you want to keep it going around in circles. So we are going to come over here to this side now. And this one makes it a little bit more harder or a little bit more hard to get it completely centered. But essentially you want your point there matching up with this point here of where these two meet up at in this point. That point right there. So you want to point them right at that. So that way there you got it all lined up nice and straight. The biggest obstacle on this would be trying keeping everything nice and straight. If you need to pen, if you don't want to, you don't have to. I myself am not pinning. Just because I don't really like pinning unless I have to. And I may have lost my point on that one. You can see I made it just beneath where those two stitch lines come together. I should have moved up just a little bit, but I did not. So I may have lost that point just a little. But on the outside, since I'm doing black, it's very forgiving. And you really can't actually tell too much. So now I'm going to come over here to this one. And try to get as centered as possible. You, another way you can center these is if you want, you can fold this right in half and just make a nice little finger press right up here and then you can do the same to this by folding your piece here in half 
and do a nice little press there just by squeezing or pressing that a little bit and then lining those two up. That's one of the way that you can do it. Most of the time, I just eyeball it to make sure that I got roughly about the same amount overhang on each end and that my point of my triangle is facing right towards the point over there. Some fabrics I will do it though. Others, not so much. All depends. Square yeah. up just a little bit to catch, make sure I can. Oops. Okay, so that one I gotta re sew. I swerved up and couldn't save myself. Okay. Try that again. I'll just lose my point there. That's okay. I'm not that worried about it. There we go. Now we got a good quarter inch seam on there. And this. And as you guys can probably hear, Clay's are going a little crazy that it's my green cheek sunk on here that's in my room with me. I had two others in here, but Quasar is the one that you will hear majority of the time in my videos. Because he is a very, very social boy and loves to have all of the attention. So let me press these. And next, we are going to take the black over onto the other two sides. majority of the time if I lose my points I'm not exactly all that extremely worried about it unless it's like a star block that block I do like to keep my points Alrighty, now I'm just trimming off my little dog ears off of this, so that way there I can press this, and then we can do one more last layer. Oh, actually, nope, we still got two more layers to go. Haha, <laughs> psych, two more layers. So far, this is what we have coming out. Now, if you wanted to stop here, you could. But a typical snail trail goes more. So I'm going to go more as well. So the next one is the C block, which is seven and three quarters. And when you cut up one square, you receive four pieces and you only need two. I think it's a C that goes, yep, the C is next. Just had to double check myself to make sure. Just pinning the other one so that way there I don't lose any of my previous pieces. So that way there on my SS pieces, I know what they are. 
And so now what we are going to do is we are going to try and do, since we did that one on that side, now we need to do this one on this side. And it will come out like so. And it'll wind up looking like this. So I am going to start off with doing these two. And then I'll come back and do the black pieces. And now we are back to where we can use the center piece here to line up our triangles. And now we are going to do the other side of the same fabric. Come off my dog ears and my strings. Last time I just used a pair of scissors or a snip to right here to trim off my dog ears, finger press, and then keep going. Figure why I go stop and go to the iron if I don't need to just quite yet. As long as it's laying flat enough, then I'm happy. So now we're going to do this piece here. Do the black on the other two sides. That way everything lines up nice and pretty. Bring your press this one back so that way that I can make sure that my triangle is lining up just perfectly. And we are almost done. Because once I press this with the iron, then we'll just have... Oh, and trim off my dog ears. Then we'll just have one more round to go. And then that would be done. And so far, this is what we have coming out so far. Isn't that super cute? So, let's do up our last round. <coughs> Sorry, my allergies are a little messed up this week. So, this one here is letter A, which is the outside ring, which is seven and a half inch squares of each fabric that was cut in half. 
So this one here, we are going to do on these two sides for the skeleton fabric, and these two will be the black, which will complete our um, block. <laughs> Sorry for all the coughing, guys. My allergies are a little messed up this week. Been crazy weather here in Michigan this week, and so got my allergies a little on the messed up side. Coming off my dog ears now. Pressing this back, just finger pressing for now. Ooh, this is gonna be a big block, and it's gonna be so pretty. And then at the end of the, towards the end of the year, when I think I have enough blocks, I am going to be um, putting this all together in a quilt and most likely giving it to my oldest son for Christmas. And if he watches this before then, then I guess the surprise would be up. Other than the actual layout of it and everything, he'll see the blocks, he'll see the fabrics, but he won't see the layout. And worst case, you know, I'll just tell him not to watch my videos of the recorded ones between now and then. This. My boys are about due for a new quilt. Their previous ones and everything that I made them are roughly about, I don't know, a couple years old. Roughly, around about. So now I'm just sewing the black pieces on. <coughs> and then that will complete this block once we get the sewn on, the center, or the dog ears trimmed off, as well as the um, whole block crust. I just went ahead and trimmed off those dog ears on that piece. As well as my threads. And so on, on the last piece now. Make sure I'm round about towards the center where my point meets up with this point. And then I got roughly about the same amount of overhang on both sides. Try to keep it as centered as possible. I just eyeball it. You can mark it, you could crease it with your fingers, crease it with an iron, however it is that you feel more comfortable with doing this. All right, so let me do a quick finger press of this one. Then I'll take it over to the iron over here and give it a good pressing. Just be careful when you're pressing. Remember that these are all these half square triangles and quarter square, square triangles that were all cut are all um, bias edges 
and can easily stretch and get distorted. But here is today's quilt block. It is the Snell Trail done up in black as well as Jack Skellington fabric, which is my son's favorite, my youngest or my oldest son's favorite. So if you had, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please sh make sure you like, share, subscribe, hit that thumbs up button because you know it always helps my views, and then comment down in the in the comment section down below. What blocks would you like to see me do? Next week is going to be the courthouse steps of the log cabin. So stay tuned. And I will have to figure out what I'm going to do for those fabrics. Because, you know, a log cabin is more than two fabrics. So stay tuned. Bye.